Nature is not a place to visit, it's our home. Nature is all that we see. Animals, insects, disappearing into their surroundings. Using deceptions, disguises, lures. Nature is all that we hear. The call of an eagle, the hiss of ocean spray, the rumble of thunder, the doings of a cricket. The wonderful beauty of nature, the crucial, fragile affinity between animal life and their environment. All of this is World of the Wild. A habitat found around the world, wetlands are the vital link between land and water. Swamps, mangroves, low-lying floodplains are all forms of wetland habitat. And whether the water is salt, fresh, or somewhere in between, they are considered the most biologically diverse ecosystems on the planet. In this episode, we flock with wetland birds, witness the distinctive life stages of frogs, learn the ancient adaptations of snapping turtles, stalk the waters with saltwater crocodiles, and peer into the social life of fiddler crabs. An indispensable component of the wetlands ecosystem, the vocal frog also provides this watery habitat with its characteristic soundscape. With nearly 5,000 species spread across every continent except Antarctica, these widely distributed amphibians are not limited to wetlands, but are at their most prolific within them, particularly in the tropics. Warty skinned or not, there is actually no taxonomic difference between toads and frogs, and they all share the same life cycle. After breeding, frogs lay their eggs in a jelly-like substance in or near the water. Heavily predated upon by wetland snakes and wasps, the developing larvae can detect the vibrations of predators and hatch early to avoid being eaten. Typically in the space of just 24 hours, the tadpoles will metamorphosize into fully-fledged frogs. Losing their gills and tail and sprouting four legs, they emerge on the surface at the end of the process almost a different creature entirely. A largely carnivorous species, frogs target the abundant insect life of the wetland, firing their sticky, elongated tongues to snatch passing prey. Excellent swimmers, frogs are also adapted to the terrestrial aspect of the wetland, with most species being proficient climbers. And with their heavily muscled hind legs, frogs are relative to size the best jumpers of all vertebrates. Each frog call is unique to its species, and the primary purpose behind the croaking is to attract females. As such, it is generally only the males that croak and many have developed vocal sacs under their throat to amplify the sound. With females drawn to intense low frequency calls, some frogs can be heard over a kilometer and a half away.
coming in a range of colors and shapes, frog eyes project outward from either side of the head, granting a visual field of almost 360 degrees, a distinct advantage in avoiding the wetland's many predators. A transparent third eyelid provides additional protection when swimming underwater. As amphibians, frogs are able to respire through their highly permeable skins. This adaptation allows them to breathe underwater, but also makes them susceptible to contamination from their environment. With pollutants carried in the waterways and the global spread of the deadly chytrid fungus, amphibians are the most endangered animals on the planet, and over a third of frog species are facing extinction. Vital to the wetland ecosystem, if frogs are to be protected, the wetlands must remain pristine. Host to an ever-changing array of feathered residents and visitors in the wetlands, birds bring variety and beauty to an already teeming ecosystem. Beyond the influence of the seasons, the wetlands are shaped by the flow of water, and with tides, droughts and floods, this is an environment in a constant state of flux. Countless species of bird rely on this habitat for all or part of their lives. And in times of plenty, the wetlands are alive with birds in their hundreds of thousands. Multiple species share this aquatic landscape for weeks or months at a time. Periods of flood expand the resources and opportunities that the wetland affords and during these times of abundance, year-round residents will live side by side with masses of seasonal visitors. Wading birds exhibit a range of adaptations specialized to this habitat. With long necks, long legs, and pointed beaks, they stalk the shallows to peck out fish and small invertebrates from the water. With short legs and broad bills, waterfowl float on the surface, using their web feet to paddle, and then submerge, feeding bottom up on the aquatic plants growing underwater. The large congregations at the wetland floods draw are not always a harmonious experience, and squabbles are a frequent occurrence as the pecking order is established. In the still waters of more tropical wetlands, water lilies thrive, and species such as long-toed lily trotters use these as a hunting surface over waters that would otherwise be beyond their reach. For a great many species, wetlands present the ideal nesting and nursing area. Sheltered and with a plentiful food supply, a variety of birds take advantage of the wetland to establish nesting sites, hatch their young, and teach hatchlings the skills they need to survive in the wild.
For the migratory species, they will eventually take to the wing once more, venturing from the relative security of the wetlands to the wider world beyond. These mass exoduses are among the most spectacular sights in the natural world. Such sites may become increasingly rare as climate change alters the flooding patterns of the wetlands, reducing the amount of bird life they can support. Careful management of the waterways that feed these systems is required to ensure that the waters continue to reach the wetlands and the abundance of bird life continues to flourish. of North America, one ancient species continues its tenure into the modern era, the snapping turtle. Ranging from the subtropical water systems of the eastern United States to the cooler climes of southeastern Canada, the prehistoric snapping turtle remains perfectly designed for life in the wetlands. Floating near motionless, they lure curious frogs or fish into their open mouths with a worm-like appendage anchored to their tongue. Before snapping their jaws shut on the hapless victim. Flexible and extendable necks grant them a wide strike range when prey isn't quite as close. Omnivorous animals, snapping turtles play an important role in the ecology of the wetland. Tending to hunt in the cooler months of the year, they will feed on anything they can swallow, including small mammals, birds, even other reptiles and carrion. While bears and alligators offer potential threats, Adult snapping turtles know few predators in the wild. The lifespan of this creature is poorly understood, but they are estimated to live up to 100 years in favorable conditions. Juvenile turtles are more vulnerable to wetland predators, such as water birds and snakes. With a preference for muddy, brackish water, when threatened, Snapping turtles will swim for the bottom in order to bury themselves in the sediment. Most at home in the water, snapping turtles can travel extensively over land in search of new habitat or to find suitable nesting sites. Digging into sandy soil, females will lay their eggs beneath the surface, guiding each into place with her hind legs before covering the clutch and leaving them to fend for themselves. Ancestor of around 80% of today's turtle species, this prehistoric reptile is now threatened by deliberate hunting activities and habitat destruction. A long-lived animal with slow reproduction rates, it will require a sustained effort to ensure this ancient creature from our past 
continues into our future. In the world of the wild, every thriving habitat has its predators. And for the wetlands, the top spot is occupied by the saltwater crocodile. With a huge range from the east coast of India to northern Australia, this cold-blooded carnivore rules the mangroves, swamps, lagoons, and connecting waterways of its wetland habitat. The largest terrestrial predator in the world can grow to over six meters in length and weigh well over a ton. Their streamlined, muscular bodies are protected by a coat of thick skin embedded with bony plates. Short limbs end in clawed, webbed feet to aid in swimming. And broad snouts packed with sharp, peg-like teeth deliver the most powerful bite in the animal kingdom. Silently patrolling their territory, they appear much like a piece of floating debris so as not to raise alarm. When prey is known to be in the area, they expel the air from their lungs and sink to the bottom, where they can wait in the perfect attack position for hours without so much as a bubble to hint at their presence. Throughout its tropical and subtropical range, the wet season plays a significant role in this species' distribution. Fiercely territorial, male saltwater crocodiles fight to occupy the prime stretches of the waterways, with dominant crocs pushing juvenile males into more marginal areas. During periods of increased rainfall, Sections of wetland that are normally cut off become connected, and these younger reptiles can find themselves in surprisingly confined habitats, where they may have to remain until the rains return. Mating occurs during the wet season with females laying their eggs in a nest along the wetland shore. Guarded by both parents, the eggs will hatch around 80 days later and the baby crocodiles emerge, their sex determined by the temperature in the nest. Despite the high level of maternal care shown by female crocodiles, the vulnerable young are heavily predated upon by the other inhabitants of the wetland and only around 1% will survive to reach adulthood. Long extinct in China and more recently through much of Southeast Asia, Australia remains a stronghold for the saltwater crocodile. But this was not always the case. Targeted for their commercially valuable skins, extensive hunting during the 20th century decimated the species, with numbers in North Australia reduced by 95%. Today, Legal protections have seen the population recover, and as long as the wetlands can support them, crocodiles will continue to thrive here.
tides play a crucial role in the wetlands, providing an ever-shifting boundary between the water and the land. Within these ebbing and flowing boundaries, one charismatic species has calmed out its niche, the fiddler crab. With around 100 species dispersed throughout the tropical wetlands of the world, this small, semi-terrestrial marine crab makes its home where few other creatures can, in the intertidal zone. This dynamic area of the wetland can be completely submerged for days before the waters recede to expose the mudflat as dry land. Living in burrows beneath the surface, when the tide is out, the crabs emerge en masse to make the most of their time above the waterline. Feeding, fighting and breeding in the viable window of opportunity before the tide comes in once more. Fiddler crabs are so named for the unique single enlarged claw sported by the males. Giving them a lopsided appearance, this brightly colored appendage can be up to half of the male's body mass. When feeding and cleaning themselves with their more functional smaller claw, male fiddler crabs are thought to take on the motions of a violinist or fiddler at play. While males frequently fight with their greater claw, its primary purpose is to attract females. Waving in a come hither motion, Male fiddlers dedicate much of their time on the wetland surface to courting potential mates. In the small world of the fiddler crab, size matters, and males with larger claws attract more females to visit their burrows, where the female may choose to mate and move in. A source of prey for many wetland creatures, particularly birds, these tiny, skittish crabs will dart for the cover of their burrows at the first hint of danger. For those that are injured in an attack, they have the ability to regenerate lost limbs. Even the male's enlarged claw can be completely regrown. Feeding on the algae and other detritus that the tides deposit on the mudflat, fiddler crabs play a vital role in the wetland ecosystem, sifting through the mud and releasing oxygen bound in its decaying matter. For those species that have their burrows in the higher reaches of the mudflat, their home is covered by the tide less often, granting them more time on the surface but with less replenishment of their food source. Moving in droves of thousands to the water's edge, they will search for sufficient concentrations of food before returning to their burrows. For a species so in tune with the tides of the wetland, rising sea levels are a major concern with areas that were once intertidal becoming permanently submerged, populations of fiddler crabs are moving higher into the wetland, inhabiting less familiar and less suitable terrain. Specialized to life in such a niche habitat, fiddler crabs are perhaps the most vulnerable species to environmental change within the wetland. Wetlands support high concentrations of diverse animal species. In this episode, we have seen a snapshot of the varied wildlife present here. With frogs, wetland birds, snapping turtles, saltwater crocodiles, and fiddler crabs. 
but wetlands are also an environment in peril. Viewed as being more valuable for their water and undeveloped land than the ecological service they provide. As the importance of these natural services is increasingly recognized, there is optimism that the wetlands will be protected in a manner reflective of their true value.